special, special day. In front of me right now is the man, the right-hand man of the one and only LeBron James, obviously uh, a CEO uh, involved with the Spring Hill Company, the one and only Maverick Carter. How are you, my man? How's everything going? Stephen A., I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me on your show. I watch it every morning. I enjoy it. You make me laugh and think and all of the above. <laughs> You know, listen, man, you, you know, you describe, you know, you, when you think about Spring Hill, it's described as an empowerment-led global consumer and entertainment company. That's what we know it to be, and obviously you've been very successful thus far. Tell our audience why that description is appropriate, especially today. That description is appropriate today, especially, Stephen A., because what we strive to do is empower greatness in every individual. That's our mission, and that mission comes from the heart. That's I lived it, right? LeBron, as your audience know very well, is a great basketball player. But he gave me an opportunity a long time ago, almost 20 years ago. Now I'm getting pretty old. But he gave me and allowed me to use his platform and empowered me. So that is an emotional connection that I have and he has that we wanted other people to feel. So our tagline of more than and uninterrupted, our sports brand, the tagline is more than an athlete. We live by that. We are that. So that feeling of empowerment, we try and instill in every individual that comes in contact with everything that the Spring Hill Company does. Talk about the partnership that you've just created. I mean, this is a this is a company that's now valued at three quarters of a billion dollars. I mean, speak to that right now, because that's why you're sitting in front of me as we speak. Absolutely. So today we're announcing that we've brought on four new investors and in a fantastic group. Redbird Capital, Fenway Sports Group, Nike, and Epic Games, the maker of Fortnite. Four companies in different in different sectors, but really believe in and understand the mission of the Spring Hill Company. They believe in it so much. In fact, they're investing, all joining the board. And, the, and you know, the number will get the headline, and that's what people will print. But it's more than a number, right? The, the 141 people who work at our company, those are the first people who have to feel empowered. And that when we, when we create that feeling of empowerment, empowerment will emanate out into everything that we do. And that's what's most important to me is the people I get to work with and I'm fortunate to work with. And then as a company, the creators, the athletes, the talent, the directors, the writers that we're fortunate enough to work with, we can never be enough thankful to them. Speak about Spring Hill Entertainment in this respect. First of all, you guys have been doing great work. By the way, I encourage everybody to watch the shop when y'all show up on HBO doing the shop because that's a big time show as far as I'm concerned. And LeBron shows up, you show up. Y'all do an outstanding job with that along with the rest of the crew that you have together. But when you came together, I mean, listen, I know both of y'all a little bit. Obviously, you, you, you very, very well. And even though y'all thought, thoughts are aligned for the most part, Speak about the combination of you and LeBron and how that's been able to propel Spring Hill to another level. That's a great question, Stephen. And, the, and he's the chairman of the company. I'm the CEO. So uh, him and the rest of the board members I report to. But he and I are the founders of the company. And we have a very different. We approach things a lot the same. But then we sometimes have different perspectives. He's talent, right? He's an actor. He's a basketball player and a businessman. I'm the CEO of the company, so I have to make decisions day in, day out with the team on the everyday uh, runnings of the business where he's thinking big picture, big vision. How do we transform the company? How do we get to big ideas, big things? Because he's not in the actual day-to-day -day business of it. It allows him to think broadly, and he's out in the world, right, traveling the world, playing basketball, seeing what's happening. So he comes to the table as the chairman of the board with big vision, big ideas, like where we are today, this is all out of his brain and his ideas of the vision that he had for this company and what it meant. And he attacks things from an emotional standpoint. Sure, he likes to make money, he plays basketball, he gets paid, but he's he that, that is probably three or four on his list when he's thinking about business, when he's thinking about the Spring Hill Company. It's empowerment, it's changing people's lives, it's creating content, products, brands that really, truly do empower people through the content we make, but also the people that we get to work with and hire. You know, you, I love the fact that you brought up him being emotional because I think about you and to me, you're not that guy. You know what? But but in, a, in the same breath, you're just as passionate, not just as a, not necessarily as emotional, but just as passionate. So when we talk about him being the chairman and obviously he's a guy in that position and he comes up at, at it from an emotional perspective, I imagine he plays a creative role as well. But when it comes to you, what role in terms of, I know you run things, but in terms of communicating with him on a daily basis from a creative perspective, do you find yourself being more of a visionary in this project or y'all aligned in that regard in terms of your creative yeah, juices? That's a great question. 
our company creativity is at the center of everything we do, Stephen A. Our our creative team, our chief creative officer, Ricardo Vermontes, is fantastic. Our CMO, Paul Rivera. Everybody knows our company is led on on creativity and empowerment is the thread that we pull through everything. But to your point, myself, I try and stay not I try and not get too emotional, too high or too low, because I have to try and make decisions that are good for the company and good for the people that work in the company and good and great for our partners. And LeBron is a visionary. He's a he's a creative guy himself. He likes to see and understand, especially if he's going to be in the content, what is, it, what is it about, what it's for, what we're trying to achieve, and then what message we're trying to get across. And he gets deep into the creative and, and the thought process of what it'll look like, especially if he's involved. And for me, I let the creatives do their job because I am not a creative. People always say, you know, you're a producer, but I'm not a creative. I'm not a writer, a director, or an athlete. So I let the creatives do their job, and my job is to give the creators the platform and get all of the things out of the way that will hinder them making great decisions and putting forth great creativity. Mav, i got to ask you this question, man. I- I'm trying to figure out what the hell else is there for you guys to accomplish. I mean, you just did Space Jam 2. I mean, I saw LeBron acting in Trainwreck. I actually thought he did a hell of a job in that movie Trainwreck. I thought that was a hilarious movie. I'm looking at the partners that you've just assembled, and clearly there's always, always more to do. But what's the vision moving forward in light of what you've already accomplished? That's a great question, Stephen. And, you know, as you know, because you live this way, right, you're an inspiration to me and what we do. What happened yesterday, nobody gives a damn. Nobody cares. You move on. You keep moving forward. That's how life works. In the sports business, somebody's going to win the Super Bowl and the NBA championship and the World Series this year. And the day after the, somebody wins the NBA championship, you're going to be on this show talking about who can win next year. So that's how I approach everything in life. And I was grew up an athlete playing sports. And, and as my football coach used to tell me, we'd have a good game on Friday night. Everybody be in the paper. You scored a touchdown mm-hmm. this. You'd be up reading the paper on Saturday morning. you say, listen, that and a dollar will get you a cup of coffee. It's on to the next one. So, for, right. and, and, and I watch your show. I know you. Who won the championship last year? The Bucks were fantastic. Who's going to win it next year? They did a great job, but we're not talking about that no more. Who can win it this year is what matters. Let me transition uh, to this subject before I let you get on out of here. Obviously, Kyrie Irving is making news because of his position. Uh, This is a guy that you're very, very familiar with because he was a teammate of LeBron James, particularly when they won the championship against the Golden State Warriors. Once upon a time, LeBron James didn't speak out too much about what his position was on being vaccinated or whatever, but we've learned that he is, along with his family and what have you, and he's obviously on the court with the Los Angeles Lakers. There's a mandate in New York, a mandate in Los Angeles, a mandate in San Francisco, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm asking you this question as a basketball fan, because you're a former high school teammate of LeBron James. You were a baller yourself. I know you personally and know how much you know about the game of basketball. How do you feel about all of this Kyrie stuff, and how do you feel about the effect that it could potentially have on this upcoming NBA season? Yeah, I, you know, I'm extremely familiar with Kyrie. I don't know him. I've had one or two conversations with him in my life, but Stephen A., me, our company, Spring Hill, LeBron, we've always been about trying to be a part of this solution. We, at Spring Hill, we did a podcast with Jamel Hill, who used to be work on this network, and it was about educating people and understanding that black people have a hesitancy to vaccines, and that stems from the racism that's been throughout healthcare and throughout many uh, industries and verticals in this country. But we want to be a part of the solution. I think LeBron said it best, and the way he thought about it, the approach, he was hesitant. He went out, him and his wife. They got educated, they understood it, and they made the decision that was best and they thought was best for them after they got educated. And that's what I think is the way to do, approach this thing. And I want to be a part of the solution and help people. We all love NBA basketball, football, sports. We love living, being around family. I think black people and all people should be educated and get to a solution on this thing. Man, continue to be the inspiration that you are. Continue to lead Spring Hill in a new, to, into a new stratosphere. Proud of you, proud of LeBron James, proud of all the lives that you've affected in such a positive fashion. My man, Maverick Carter, I really appreciate the time, my man. You take care of yourself, and good luck moving forward. Thank you for having me, Stephen A., and thank you for doing this show every day. You're an inspiration to me. Thanks a lot, my man. Molly. Great you. interview. Maverick Carter doing